Yeah. So in the last two sessions, we discussed about what uh, does it mean uh, by... Good morning, uh, Lakshman, sir. I have a question. Please. Uh, I have attended last two sessions of yours. Okay. So I am a chartered accountant. I want to know uh, as part of the sessions, when are you going to show us the screens of Fusion or EBIS? I understand the flow, the functionality in Excel and the diagrams. So I am more keen to know the actual screen. Where is the configuration? Where are the setups? Where is the transaction? Thank you. Yeah. In the last week, in the second session, we have seen the screen like how to create the user and all, right? Hope you attended that. Have you attended that session? No, I have not. No, I have not. Yeah. We have seen, we have seen the user creation and the actual instance, what application we are going to use. Yes, I taken through that navigation and the user creation and few other points also discussed. Maybe you might be missing that session. Okay, you can get that uh, relevant video from our team. You can go through. And uh, I'll so how about how about uh, you know user creation is fine when it comes to financials. See, there is about... one second, one second. See, this is not like uh, some one concept we are going to deal. This is all about entire course. We have to go in the sequence. If you are expecting to the see the instance, maybe you can see tomorrow. Okay. So we have to go through some sequence so that we can understand properly. So that's how I'm driving these classes. Right? Then tomorrow, no instance. Sorry, today, no instance. We are not going to work on instance. Today, we'll talk about some process of that. Yeah, I'm going to say the same. Just give me some time. I'll, I'll come to that point. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, please. Thanks. Okay. So in the last session, we have seen like, what does it mean by Oracle Fusion Cloud Financials or Oracle Fusion Cloud Financials applications, right? We discussed about what does it mean the Oracle application and what is the meaning of financials Fusion and cloud. That's what we did. And we discussed about different cloud options available for the clients. And when it comes to the product, how we can get access. The concept called as instance. The concept called as instance, we can access to the product. By default, we get access to two instances. Those are test standard of production instances. And if client is going to subscribe pass platform as a service to do the developments, to do the customizations, the client can get one more instance for a development or else they can use test instance itself for a testing as well as development instance, development purpose. And yeah. this is the production. One second, let me explain, please. I'll take all the questions. Yeah and production instance okay production instance is the one which client will use once implementation is done we'll come to know all these detail level and for training purpose oracle is providing one instance that we are calling as vision instance and within the vision instance you can find the sample data okay you can find the sample data and in case of test or production we have to create the data there won't be any sample data. These instances we call as fresh instances. What purpose we are using accordingly, we can call as a test or development or production instances. But the vision instance, what we get from Oracle, okay, within that you can find the sample data. The sample data Oracle is providing with a company called as Vision. Okay, with the company called as Vision. That is the reason we are calling instance as vision instance. This always we get with the sample data. And we have seen how to create the user also, how to create the implementation user. If you are going to work as an implementation consultant, 
okay after doing this course we can apply for the job called as oracle fusion financials functional consultant so if you are going to work as a consultant in any project to work on system please go on mute somebody unmuted please thank you if you are going to work on the system we need a user that user required access to these two roles okay these two roles access required the application implementation consultant role will provide access to setup part the same you can call as a configuration or you can say implementation also it security manager role is required for consultants to create the users and to assign the roles these are the points we discussed along with that we discussed about the release what are the instances we are going to use how to check that instances belongs to which release okay this is how that version you can see within that version this we call as release the version 11 is fixed okay for fusion the version they are giving as a 11 or you can say 11g fusion application version is 11g 11g we have for database also that's different from this so version is uh, version is 11 but we never call we never refer fusion applications with the version always we refer fusion application with the release okay r13 so release 13 so this represents year and this represents month okay what is the latest patch is applied that you can find out with this year and month so these are the points we discuss so before we get into the application we have to understand two basic processes if you are aware of those two basic processes once we start working on the application or if you are going to work on the financial application or if you are if you want to understand the supply chain management application related basic process so these two processes will help us okay two basic processes we have to understand those are like purchasing process and the sales process if you are comfortable with these two processes easily we can understand how what sort of business process can be managed with our financial application our financial applications are connected with which other applications and what purpose how the transaction takes place across those applications or you can say departments so these and all will come to know so that our job will become very easy to understand this financials application okay so in today's session we'll go through these two cycles if time permits we can work on the instance also fine let's look into those two cycles the first one is purchasing process if you talk about purchasing if any organization is going to purchase any items or material or goods you can call with any name so what process they follows and what are the different departments are involved and what would be the responsibility of each and every department how the departments can establish the communication among those these points we have to understand okay so these points we have to understand so that for which application which department what application is or what oracle is providing by using that application primarily what activities we can do that we have to understand so that the process wise will get some command so that when you start working on any application you can understand where you are standing what is a before and what is after where exactly we are standing will have some clarity that will help us to understand the product very easy yep now let's talk about purchasing process or call it as a procurement process so these are the various departments are involved which are involved directly which are involved indirectly will come to know very soon say for example we received an order from our customer okay we received an order from customer for 100 laptops take this case we received an order from our customer for 
100 laptops when you receive order from customer for 100 laptops what we have to do so we have to check whether the stock is available or not within the inventory department inventory department responsibility is they maintain the stock okay they maintain the stock they manage the stock information if any order is coming from the customers who receive that order which department that will discuss later that is not required that will cover in the sales process okay say our organization received one order from the customer for 100 laptops so we have to check the 100 laptops are available or not in the inventory department if stock is available we can supply that item okay you can call as item okay you can just the laptop you can call as item if stock is available you can supply those items if stock is not available what inventory department in what process inventory department has to initiate say for example order we received for 100 laptops when we check the stock availability within the inventory department we don't have stock it could be zero or else we have a like 20 or 30 laptops already available you can take any scenario so if stock is not available what inventory department has to do is they have to raise the purchase requisition okay they have to create the purchase requisition here if if there is any shortage within the inventory department inventory department has to raise the purchase requisition what information we can have within the purchase requisition what item is required how much quantity is required okay so those specifications those specifications all you can have within the purchase requisition which item how much quantity by which date we require and other specifications related to that item we can specify in the purchasing requisition so inventory department is taking the initiative to raise the purchase requisition they take the initiative they we have to say they raise the requisition that requisition should be approved within the inventory department itself the approvals are required if somebody says we need 1000 laptops that should not go to purchasing department to purchase internally within the inventory department the authorized people should approve once the purchase requisition is approved then inventory department can pass that purchase requisition to purchasing department okay inventory department can pass that purchase requisition to purchasing department say there is a re purchase requisition for 100 laptops within the inventory department that got approved after approving this purchase requisition it goes to purchasing department so here as of now take as a purchase department what other departments also can involve in the same process that i'll cover okay for now take as a purchase department once purchase requisition is approved by inventory department that goes to purchase department they'll pass this part, approved purchase requisition to purchase department based on purchase requisition purchasing department will create rfq rfq stands for request for quotations request for quotations okay they create rfq rfq stands for request for quotations okay request for quotations they create the request for quotation what information we can have in the rfq the purchase department is requesting the suppliers okay requesting for the requesting supplier to provide the quotations okay what information they can state within the rfq we need 100 laptops these are the specifications we need in so and so time frame so please provide quotations within those quotations whenever they request for quotation definitely they request for quotations from multiple vendors from multiple suppliers so the purchasing department submitted this rfq maybe for 10 vendors so whenever this purchasing department submit rfq to vendors they'll respond by providing the quotations that means the purchasing department will receive the quotations 
Okay, they'll receive quotations. They receive the quotations. After receiving the quotations, they have to do the quotation analysis. They do the quotation analysis, or you can call it as quote analysis. Quotation analysis. What exactly they do as a part of quotation analysis? They look at the price. Say they requested 10 suppliers to provide the quotations. Out of 10, say they received quotations from four suppliers. Then they look into those four quotations which they received from the different suppliers. They analyze who's giving at best price, who's giving at best terms. Say one supplier may say, I can supply the laptop at 30,000 rupees, but you have to pay immediately. Other supplier may send the quotation, we can supply at 28,000 rupees, but you have to pay, okay, sorry, just, you can say like, uh, we will give you at 32,000, but you have, you can pay in one month. Now our organization has to take the decision. One supplier is offering at 30, another supplier is offering 32. If you have funds available, yes, you can buy at 30,000 so that you can pay immediately. Funds are not available in the organization. We may plan to buy at 32,000 since they are giving credit. They are giving the time to pay, that is one month. So this is how the purchase department will look into all the points that we call as quotation analysis. They analyze, okay? Analyze who is giving the best price and best terms. After analyzing, they have to choose one best quotation. Okay, choose best quotation. First they are requesting and they are receiving, they are analyzing, they are choosing the best quotation. After choosing the best quotation, the purchase department can place the purchase order against that supplier. Okay, they can place the purchase order against that supplier. So that you can say create or you can say place purchase order. Place purchase order. You can say PO. And again, the purchase order, whatever they are going to place to supplier, they have to get the approval from the purchasing department, from the authorized people, maybe supervisor or manager from, from those authorities, they have to get the approval also. So approvals are required. That means the purchasing department is going to place purchase order to the supplier with approvals. Okay, first they'll create the purchase order that should get approved internally. Once the purchase order is approved, then they'll send to supplier. One supplier will receive the order from our organization. Okay, they have to respond by supplying the material. So supplier will supply the material and our organization will receive. Whenever we receive, see we are placing the purchase order for 100 laptops. Say we received 100 laptops. After receiving 100 laptops that we have to record in our books as a GRN. We have to record as a GRN. Say GRN. Goods receipt note. Okay. GRN. Goods receipt note. So what information we can have within the GRN? So how much what items, how much quantity we received from which supplier, these details we can record as a part of GRN. Say we received 100 laptops from the supplier because we placed order for 100 laptops and we received 100, we recorded GRN, or you can call it as simply receipt. Okay, you can call it as receipt or call it as GRN. Fine. Here you can say receipt or GRN. So we received 100 laptops and we recorded GRN for 100 receipts. Now when you conduct the inspection, you may find out few laptops are damaged or not in good condition. So you may return those to supplier. That we have to record in our books as a purchase returns. Okay. 
purchase returns. I have to record as a purchase returns. So these are the areas where purchase department has to involve. But in the most of the organizations, you can see separate department will take care of these activities. Okay, requesting for quotation, receiving quotation, analyzing the quotations, choosing the best quotation. These activities can be done by separate department called as sourcing. Sourcing, otherwise only one department will take care of all these activities. So you can just take this note. These activities majorly belongs to sourcing department. If there is separate department like sourcing and purchasing, sourcing department will take care of quotation process and choosing the best quotation. Once best quotation is chosen by sourcing department, then purchase department will come into the picture to place the PO purchase orders with approvals and rest of process. Okay. If there are no two, if, if you don't have two departments like sourcing and purchasing, these all activities should be taken care by purchasing department itself. So this is what we have to understand. The reality, okay, the reality, the receipt we create within the inventory. Since purchasing department is involving as a process, you can understand in this sequence. Now what purchase department is going to do is, the purchase department will share this GRN information with the payables department. Okay, since inventory department is requesting to procure, the purchase department is purchasing. Now the purchase department should inform the GRN information to payables department so that payables department will make the payment to supplier. So, inventory department is passing approved purchase requisition to purchase department. The purchase department is going to share this receipt information with payables department. Whenever payables department will receive this receipt information based on that receipt or say based on the GRN, they'll create purchase invoice. They'll create purchase invoice. They'll create purchase invoice. Within the purchase invoice, what information they can include? Who is the supplier? What is the supplier address? And how much we have to pay? And when we have to pay? How we have to pay? Means through check or cash or bank transfer, the payment method we call. Okay. So these are all details. Okay, who is the supplier? What is supplier address? How much amount we have to pay? When we have to pay? How we have to pay? Okay, for which items we have to pay? All the details you can record in the payables department as a purchase invoice. So as per purchase invoice, we have to pay in 10 days. After 10 days, the payables department will initiate the payment. They'll make the payment to supplier. They'll process the payment. So purchase invoice and payment. This is the primary responsibility of payables department. Okay. Hey, what is the payables department responsibility? They get the information from purchase department against the purchases, whatever they did. And based on that information, they create the purchase invoice. And as per the due date, as per the due date, they'll make the payment to suppliers. So what are the other activities they do in each and every department? We will see once we start working on that relevant application, we'll discuss more detail level. Now our target is we want to understand the basic process flow that will help us to understand everything very easily. So let's focus on what we are discussing. The rest to what we do, many things we do, but what primary we are discussing as a part of process flow, what we can do as a part of each and every department, those we'll discuss when we are working on those applications. Right? Done. Now what payables department will do is, they'll share the purchase invoice information with the asset department. Why they have to share purchase invoice information with the asset department? What is the business case? Okay, let's see what are the different reasons we create the purchase invoice. So when you purchase the items, you may create the purchase invoice. So you purchase items 
to store in the inventory so for that you may create the invoice when you purchase the items you may create the purchase invoice other cases may be services if your organization is taking the services from any service provider from any supplier so for the services also we have to pay for that we create the purchase invoice okay we create the purchase invoice for items we create purchase invoice for items if you purchase items we have to pay if you take the services you have to pay for that you have to pay the purchase invoice and if you spend some expense also you have to create the purchase invoice say you spend some expense and you have to create purchase invoice then only you can make the payment to suppliers if not this item service expense what else what is a business case we have to create the invoice that is asset asset purchase you purchase on building okay you purchase on building for that you have to make the payment if you want to make the payment purchase invoice is required for building purchase you require purchase invoice so we we may have purchase invoice for items purpose when you purchase items or when we render the services when you take the services we may have a purchase invoice and for expenses also you can have a purchase invoice apart from this item service expense when our organization is going to purchase any asset it could be land or building or machinery or vehicles or plant it could be anything so if our organization is going to buy assets or you can call these as a fixed assets okay when you purchase the fixed assets you can have a purchase invoice if the purchase invoice is related to item purchase or services or expenses the payables department is not going to share that purchase invoice information with asset department if the purchase invoice is belongs to asset purchase then payables department will share the asset information that asset related information to asset department asset related information you can have in the form of purchase invoice okay so if you have any purchase invoice in the payables department which is related to fixed asset related purchase the payables department will share that information with asset department okay based on that the asset department will create fixed asset in their books say they received one purchase invoice which talks about one building then they have to record in their books asset department is responsible to maintain the assets okay so they'll create the fixed asset and based on the uses or time they calculate the depreciation so they purchased one vehicle so now the vehicle value is maybe 5 lakhs after one year we have to reduce the value since we are using or it will turn into old and all we have to evaluate that asset what is the current value of asset so to do that in the system process we have to do the depreciation we'll discuss when you are working on asset department related application we'll discuss if you, what is the meaning of fixed assets what does it mean by depreciation calculation etc we'll discuss detail level but now you take the simple point if purchase invoice belongs to asset purchase the payables department will share with asset department so that asset department will create fixed asset against that asset related purchase invoice they calculate the depreciation for the same so this is a point we have to understand other point is the payables department what they are doing they are creating the purchase invoices against the receipt what they are receiving from purchasing department and they are processing the payment so purchase invoice information they are sharing with asset department okay asset department the payment information they have to share with cash department okay the payment information they have to share with the cash department what is the responsibility of cash department why we require cash department in the organization the cash department responsibility is they maintain the bank accounts okay bank accounts the responsibility of cash department is 
they maintain their bank accounts and they perform the bank statement reconciliations. So bank statement reconciliations. So they maintain the bank accounts. How many bank accounts are owned by organization? All the bank accounts, the cash department will take care. And what does it mean by bank statement reconciliation? Bank statement reconciliation means what cash department will do is they get the bank statement from banker. Okay, they get bank statement from banker. As per bank statement, say banks bank statement is showing the information in the March month we processed 10 payments. Bank statement, as per bank statement, cash department are able to find out 10 payments. And other side, the cash department will collect the payments data from payables department. Okay. The cash department need payments information from payables department. That means payables department will share payment information with cash department. So other side, they'll take payables payments. Okay. Fine. From payables, from payables department, they get the payments data. As per payables department, okay, 15 payments. It's very simple. Cash department is getting the report, one side from the bank, other side from the payables department. The payables department is saying, we processed 15 payments, these are the details. The bank statement says, only we process 10 payments. Now, the cash department responsibility is they have to find out the reasons. If those are matching, okay. If those are not matching, they have to find out the reality. Yes, payables department is processed 15 payments to the suppliers. That is the reason they're giving the report to cash department 15 payments. But bank statement is showing only 10 payments are processed. Yes, payables department given 15 payments to supplier, say, 15 payments are submitted. The 15 payment related checks are submitted in the bank, but only 10 payments are cleared. Or else only 10 payments are submitted. 10 checks are submitted in the bank. Only 10 got cleared. Remaining five checks are not submitted by suppliers. It could be any case, okay? Submitted but not cleared or not submitted. Or else, it could be the case, the payables department, they process payments and they might have forgot to submit those checks to suppliers. The one or two checks, maybe in the payables department only, they didn't remit those checks to suppliers. So when they find out the difference, they can verify, they can check. What is the variance? Why this two sides like payable, payables department and the bank, bank statement, why we are finding the variance. So they can easily find out and they can, if any necessary action they have to take, they can do it. Or else by doing this, they can just avoid the fraud also in the organization. Say payables department is given the report to cash department, we process 10 payments. But as per bank statement, 10 payments are processed. Payables department really processed only five payments, but in the bank statement, 10 payments are resulting. What about that additional five payments? How they have to find out? There may be some fraud happened in the organization or it could be something else they can look into so that they can identify the mistakes or the issues related to this payables department information and bank statement information with respect to payments. This simply you can call as payment reconciliation. Okay, they are reconciling the payments. They are cross-checking the payment information between the payables department and a bank statement. So that is the reason this bank statement reconciliation here, they are reconciling, they are cross-checking, they are verifying only payments information. So that is the responsibility of cash department. Okay, cash department responsibility is they have to maintain all the bank accounts and they have to do the bank statement 
reconciliations. They have to do the bank statement reconciliations. So this is the job of cash department. So later, these are all departments. Okay, if you want to prepare the reports related to invoices or payments, yes, you can create, you can prepare the reports in payables department only. If you want to prepare the reports related to your bank accounts, means the cash or reconciliation related reports, you can prepare within the cash department. Asset related reports, you can prepare in the asset department only. The same way, inventory related reports, you can prepare within the inventory department. This is how. If you want to prepare any reports, the data, the report is belongs to which department, in that department only you can prepare. So instead of preparing the reports in the different, different departments, yes, the different departments can prepare the reports related to their data. Apart from that, if you want to prepare the common reports, which will result in your entire business process, whatever we are discussing now, all the data should be in one place. For that, you may have some common department. You may have people who collect the data from all these departments, and based on that, they may prepare the reports. That means simply you can say, if you want to prepare the financial reports, Okay, if you want to prepare the financial reports, which will represent this all the different department related financial activities. So you have to move this complete data into okay, all these departments data, whatever the data is required, the data you have to move to common department. So that all the data, the cash related data and uh, the purchase invoices and payment related data and fixed assets and de uh, depreciation data, and here receipts data, whatever the data is required to prepare the reports, all the data you can collect into one place. So who are going to manage that data, you may call the department is common data, common department, and they can prepare the financial reports. Okay, they can prepare the financial report. This is how the communication takes place among the departments. Okay, what purpose inventory is going to talk with the purchase department? based on the requirement, requisition. If there is any shortage within the warehouse or inventory department, they have to keep in touch with the purchase department so that purchase department can purchase whatever they require. Against the purchases, the purchase department cannot make the payment. For that, the purchase department should pass that information to payables department so that payables department can take the initiative of making the payment to suppliers. The payables department is sharing asset related purchase invoice information to asset department so that they can maintain the assets and they can calculate the depreciation and payables department should share payments information to cash department so that they can perform the bank statement reconciliations. Finally, all the departments will share the data with the common department to prepare the financial reports. Okay, financial reports. We'll talk about, okay, for which department, what application Oracle is providing, we will discuss. Before we proceed with that point, any questions from anyone, please? Yeah, any questions from anyone, question. please? Yeah, Lashman, please. quick question. So, when, when we get the inventory, how, how does that inventory goes back to the inventory department? I mean, yeah, if it is an asset, yeah, it makes sense. But let's say in your example, if we if the vendor has fulfilled that order of 100 laptops how is that going back and updating in the inventory department with that inventory we have to record the receipt okay, okay. that will update the inventory okay. yeah this will update the the quantities within the inventory department okay and one of the question is let's say if if i have a predefined suppliers and i don't want to go through the rfq process i already have a set of defined contracts with suppliers. Can I skip that complete RFQ process and directly right. go yes. to a- Simple, yeah. Say today you purchased, today you want to purchase the laptops because you don't know what is the exact price and all you want to get the quotations, You've gone through the quotation process and analysis, choosing the best quotation, placing the order. Tomorrow, again, you want to buy the laptops. 
Do you think you, again you have to get the quotations? Yesterday only you received the quotations and you finalized one supplier and you purchased. Tomorrow also if you need same laptops, you no need to go with the quotation process again. Directly you can place the order. Okay. After one month again you want to buy the laptops. You may go with this quotation process. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and what are the, what are the typical contents of a purchase order when you are Okay, in the purchase order, supplier information. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are placing the order to which supplier, what is the supplier address, and what is the which item we require. We are placing the order for which item, and how much quantity we require, and what is the price. Okay. And uh, when we require that item, and to which location the supplier has to send the invoice. And to which location the supplier has to ship the material. Okay. So this one all. Okay. And yeah, okay. we should know all this, but the point is so once we get into that, uh, if you understand, there won't be any confusion. That is the reason I am not addressing more detail level since right, right. we didn't see anything what is inside, just only process flow. What exactly what information we can record as a part of PO or receipt or right. purchase returns or invoice or payment definitely we have to understand and we'll come across all those yeah okay and and yeah. one final question i think maybe you're going to address this in the future as well so let's say if i have a pre-negotiated contracts with suppliers so in in this example right let's say i negotiated already a contract i already have a negotiated contract with the supplier saying that hey you're going to give me a laptop for 10,000 rupees for next two years. Mm -hmm. And and if that, if there is already a negotiated contract in place, can that contract information be pulled directly into PO and then exactly. the PO? Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. Because we have a purchase orders, different types. One is purchase order where you can place the order. The other one is we have a agreements mm -hmm. or you can okay. call as contracts. There you can define the terms which item, okay, for what period supplier promised us they'll supply. So you will be creating the purchase orders against those contracts or against those agreements. You don't create directly in those scenarios. Okay. Because you can okay. auto-generate also. Purchase okay. orders, you can auto-generate based on those agreements. Okay. That means we can prepare one purchase order or the, as per the contract? No, no. See, you have a contract for one item for one year. Okay. You may inform, may not inform the quantity. Okay. It could be any scenario. You can create n number of purchase orders against that. If there is a quantity limitation, within that quantity, you can create one or multiple purchase orders. Okay. There is no quantity limitation. Yes, you can create as many you require. Supplier promised. You will supply whenever, whatever you require. Okay. There will be different contracts. In some contracts, what you can do is, you will have a contract with the supplier yes. to a certain amount only. You never specify which item you require, when you require, what price also you require. Just up to that contract value, supplier has to supply whatever you are requesting. In some other contracts, you will have a contract for specific item. Okay, Specific item only. There could be time period. And you may not inform to the supplier where supplier has to supply that. Whenever you come to know, then you'll inform, then they will supply. These all may not be predefined. Sometimes you know, this uh, our company is uh, supply, uh, purchase some material from other countries. Mm. Then uh, what will the payment uh, payment process in between the which agreement is prepared against LC like that? Sorry, sorry. Sometimes the company purchases. Yes, we purchase can purchase from other, other countries, foreign vendors. Other countries. Yeah. So company doesn't know the supplier. In which mm. the bank will the give in surety. Mm. So no, we, we can see. get the LC. LC document is there. See, see, LC is the process. Letter of credit is the process, but don't think <clears throat> we don't know who is the supplier. Yeah. No, we know the supplier. Without knowing, we never buy. Yeah, we, we, know, we know the supplier. But, uh, security direction. purpose. Okay. Security purpose. security purpose. Okay. Who are supplying? Our supplier is supplying the material to us. 
since the supplier is a foreign supplier they need some security for that the banks will come into the picture our supplier bank and our bank will start communicating with respect to the payment security between our supplier and us so but supplier is known only if you don't know the supplier we never do the business yes, yes, that is not there yeah. supplier is known only see we talk to the supplier and they have to give the quotations yeah, we process, quotation yeah. everything is supplier everything. is known the additional yes. point is lc will come into the picture letter of credit for bank uh, for guarantee purpose payment guarantee that's all sometimes supplier uh, supply partial uh, material hmm then uh, what will the payment process for that no no If simple I... see i am placing the order purchase order to the supplier for 100 quantity and i requested supplier to supply in these schedules okay in 10 days 50% 50 laptops in 20 days 25 laptops in 30 days remaining 20 laptops three schedules when we request the supplier in the three schedules first whenever supplier will supply to 50 laptops he will send the invoice for 50 laptops only will pay according yes later will receive 25 will get invoice for 25 and will pay yeah. so this is you know, yes partial yeah. material we can receive yes that is possible so how you need accordingly you can get any advance payment for supplier yes yes advance payment will give to supplier that will record in the payables department that is the concept direct payable department yes direct payables <clears throat> you are giving the payment advance means through payables only you can do it in purchasing you can you yeah. cannot record yeah. the payments yes record the payables payment. department only for for um, advance for prepare purchase invoice yeah yeah yes that you can record when just if it is for purchase you will be mapping when you are creating you will select the purchase order number also okay at the time of payment uh, purchase uh, advance transactions purchase order. Yeah. fine we will see see you can ask these questions now nothing wrong but we once we get into the application these are all we have to understand here only the target is high level process flow otherwise there are many things which we have to understand when you talk yes. about payables department there is a lot of stuff which we have to understand but this is not the time okay, no, okay. once okay. we start working on payables department related activities we discuss very detail level we have to understand theoretically there are many many business scenarios okay accordingly we have to set up the system and we'll work on the process now only the target is communication how communication takes place in case of purchasing and making the payment to the suppliers yeah. okay that very high level if you can understand whatever i am writing in the screen that is enough for now there are many things which you have to understand there is time for that okay yeah. you can ask your questions no issues please any questions such one common department is called as gl department right generally others i request others to go on mute for raising the questions yes they can unmute and they can rise others request is please go on mute yeah please can you please repeat your question uh, the common department is called as a gl department right the same one i'll, I'll discuss okay. about it very soon because uh, it, it would be like a discussion between you and me if i say that <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you thank you yeah. so i'll convert for which department which application we have what is the short name for that application we'll discuss so that uh, that makes sense any other questions uh, lakshmani uh, the purchase order that we create from payables department is one this second, one, second, one second purchase order not from payables department purchase order from i'm sorry purchase department no purchase order goes from purchasing department and it goes to payables right for the invoicing purpose purchase yeah, you get one point here yes if you want to create one second if you want to create the purchase invoice based on the purchase order you can create yes based okay. on the purchase order also you can create the purchase invoice or else based on the receipt you will create the purchase invoice so the invoice that we receive from the supplier that we recorded or just we create a purchase invoice we get invoice from the supplier yeah if you receive that 
whatever the invoice we are receiving from supplier, we should not enter in our system with blindly. We have to cross check. We have to cross check. Say supplier given purchase invoice. We receive some invoice from supplier as per supplier ten quantity or else hundred quantity or thousand quantity. Right. Okay. Price is hundred uh, quantity as per supplier invoice. Quantity is hundred thousand. Price is hundred. Now you should not enter directly. We have to verify with our purchase order. In purchase order, as per our purchase order, price is hundred or not. You have to check. And as per our receipt, whether we received thousand quantity of material or not, we have to verify. Then you can enter. That means. We create the purchase or purchase invoice in the payables department by cross-checking with our purchase order to GI. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. These are the concepts. These we call as a two-way matching, three-way matching, four-way matching. These are the concepts. Now, if we get into that, it will create confusion. So I'm not uh, uh, going to drill down to those concepts. Yeah. For your question, this is the answer. Done. Any other questions? Okay. Now we'll see. Lakshman, one one quick yeah. question on the. Please, please. Where, where does the whole tax picture come into this for the goods that we procured? I didn't get you. What? Tax, tax. Yeah. T tax you can calculate at any level, wherever like. A, in which scenario, in which situation, say, for example, you are creating a purchase invoice. You are creating purchase invoice, and the purchase invoice always will create based on the purchase orders or GR. So you can just ideally you trigger that tax calculation when we process the purchase invoices. Then whatever you have to pay to the government, you will pay whatever the tax you have to hold, you will hold. We'll see. That. Ideally, we just calculate the taxes. When you create the purchase invoices directly, you don't create the purchase invoices the payables based on this purchase department data. The purchase orders and receipt information only will uh, create the purchase invoices. If any tax is applicable, we calculate at the time of invoice creation. Okay, we'll see that. I am going to cover those tax calculations also as a part of our course. Okay, thank you. Done. Now we'll see. <coughs> So for which department, what application Oracle is providing? Okay, here we discussed what is the responsibility of inventory department. They maintain the stock, and if any shortage, they have to raise the purchase requisition. They have to get the approvals. So not only that, there are many other activities where inventory department should involve. Right. So to maintain the stock and to raise the purchase requisitions and approval purpose, from Oracle side, we have an application called as. Okay, for our kill, fusion inventory application. In short, we call it as INV. Okay, INV. Please make a note of each and every point. See, when we generally attend the classroom trainings and all, what we do, we definitely will make a note of each and every point. Please don't think you are going to get these videos. Yes, if you are going to get videos, the information will be in the videos only. That easily you cannot refer as a per quick reference. So take everything as a notes. Okay. Please make a note of each and every point, whatever we are discussing and uh, doing in the system. Everything, please make a note so that when it comes to your practice and preparation, that will help. Whatever we are recording, yes, that would be the video. All the time you cannot play the videos. You'll get bored to play again and again. So please. Capture everything into some notebook that will help you a lot. It's very important. So for inventory department, we have an application from Oracle that we are calling as Oracle Fusion Inventory. The short name is IN. So by using Oracle Fusion Inventory application, you can maintain the stock and you can create the purchase requisitions and you can work on the approval process. Not only this, you can do many other activities. And purchasing department, already we discussed these activities ideally can be handled by sourcing department. Okay, sourcing department, these activities we can handle by using the purchasing department. 
So we have a separate applications. So from Oracle also we have a separate application, sourcing application, purchasing application separately. But for our understanding, to understand this process flow, you can take. So for purchase department, we have an application from Oracle called Oracle Fusion Purchasing. The short name is PO. Okay, Oracle Fusion Purchasing, PO. Here you can notice PO stands for purchase order. Okay. The process point of view or activity point of view, PO means purchase order. When you talk about applications, PO means which application means you have to say purchasing application. Okay, application they give a short name as PO as well as the process in which process the purchase department will, will involve in that process the purchase order short name also PO. Remember, okay. So activity point of view PO means purchase order. Application point of view PO means purchasing application. This is very important. And again. Within the entire purchase department, the very primary activity is POPH, purchase order creation. Okay, so that is the reason they're taking as PO as a short name for purchasing application. So by using Oracle Fusion purchasing application, primarily you can process the purchase orders, but these ideally you can handle through sourcing application. To understand the process flow, you can say the purchasing department will raise the RFQs, they receive the quotation, they do the quotation analysis, they choose the best quotation. This is a process. When it comes to applications, is all you can handle with a single application or multiple applications. That totally depends which applications we are going to use. That's all. So to do these activities, we have a sourcing application from Oracle. Okay, sourcing, Oracle Fusion sourcing application. By using this, you can handle this. By using Oracle Fusion purchasing, you can create the purchase orders, approval, etc. You can. Do. But here, for our understanding, you can take by using Oracle Fusion purchasing application, we can raise the requisition RFQs, and we can receive quotation analysis. Whatever we discuss, that you can take under the same department or application. The next point is. So payables department, what payables department is doing? They are recording the purchase invoices and they are processing the payments to suppliers. To record the purchase invoice and to process the payments, we have an application from Oracle that we call as Oracle Fusion Accounts Payable. The short name is AP. Okay, Oracle Fusion Accounts Payable. By using Oracle Fusion Accounts Payable application, you can record the purchase invoices and you can process the payments. And what asset department is doing? They are creating the fixed assets. If any asset related purchase invoice information comes to asset department, based on that, they are creating the asset fixed assets and they are calculating the depreciation. That is the responsibility of asset department. To create and maintain the fixed assets and to calculate the depreciations against those fixed assets, we have an application from Oracle that we call as Oracle Fusion Fixed Assets. Short name is FA. Okay. By using FA, Fixed Assets application, you can create the fixed assets and you can calculate the depreciation. What else we can do? We can do many other activities. So, but the primary activities are these two. And cash department. The responsibility of cash department is maintaining the bank accounts and doing the bank statement reconciliations. When you talk about only this process, the bank statement reconciliation for payments related. That means payment reconciliation. To maintain the to create and maintain the bank accounts and to perform the bank statement reconciliations and to do some bank related other activities also. So we have an application from Oracle that we call as Oracle Fusion Cash Management, CM, Cash Management, or you can call as CE also, Cash Entry System. 
we have another application called as cost management cost management cost management short name also you can take as cm that is reason the alternative short name also they given for cash management that is ce ce means cash entry cash entry system is nothing but cash management you can call with any short name generally we use as cm only but remember ce also oracle refers for this cash management application by using oracle fusion cash management or cm application you can maintain the bank accounts and you can perform the bank statement reconciliations so these all departments will share the data with the common department so that here you can prepare the financial reports so to get the data from all these applications okay so for each department we have separate application so when we have a separate application for each department when you get the data from all these applications we have to receive the data in each application okay so to prepare the financial reports that means to collect the data from all these applications we have an application from oracle so that we call as oracle fusion general ledger application short name is gl <coughs> Okay, by using Oracle Fusion General Ledger application (GL), we can prepare the financial reports. So this is what we have to understand. <clears throat> so today we want to buy something. We have to follow this process. We have to raise requisition, approvals, RFQ, quotation, placing purchase orders, receiving material if required, performing the returns, creating purchase invoice, making the payment. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> So, and sharing this purchase invoice information with the asset department or fixed assets application if that is related asset and sharing payment information with cash management for bank statement reconciliation, sharing all the data to Oracle Fusion General Ledger application for financial reports purpose. This is a repeated activities. Today you are buying something, follow this. Tomorrow you are buying something, you have to follow. At any point of time, if you are purchasing, okay, the process should be initiated here. And primarily, the process should end with the payment. We raise the requisition and we make the payment. So, just we are sharing the payment information with our asset department and we are sharing payment information with our cash department. But primarily, these three departments, uh, these three applications are involved in the core process. The rest, Purchase invoice and payment information, it's happening internally only. Internally, we are sharing to maintain the records and to perform the reconciliations or to create assets. So, this repeated process we call as P2P cycle. Okay, P2P cycle. So, P2P stands for first P stands for procure. Procure. The two, the numerate two stands for TO2. Procure two. Other P stands for pay. Since it's a repeated activity, we are calling it a cycle. Procure to pay cycle. So where procurement is starting, procurement purchasing process is getting initiated with the purchase equation. Till payment. Till payment. So primarily these three departments are involved with the P2P cycle, procure to pay. Other departments just to collect the data only. Okay, we are sharing the payment information with cash department or cash management application. And we are sharing purchase invoice information with asset department or asset application. And we are sharing complete data with Oracle Fusion General Ledger application or you can call as common department. So these three applications just to collect the data, okay, which is getting generated from the P2P cycle. So you can say, what are the core departments are involved in the P2P cycle? You can say inventory, purchasing and the payables departments. But when you talk about complete process, you have to talk about the other departments also. Okay, other departments also. So you have to prepare with this. It is not like just understanding. 
when you attend the interview you have to explain this complete information what we discussed just now okay if you face the question could you please explain p2p cycle your answer should be p2p stands for procure to pay cycle whenever there is any demand in the organization the purchasing department in inventory department you say department only or which department which applications we are using already we discussed but ideally use the terminology as a departments only so if there is any demand in the organization the inventory department should raise the purchase requisition and they have to get the approval once the purchase requisition is approved they'll pass that information to purchase department based on that purchase department will create the rfq and they'll receive the quotations from the vendors and they do the quotation analysis finally they choose the best quotation and they place the purchase order with approvals whenever our organization will receive the material from the supplier we record the grn or you can say receipt if anything need to be returned to suppliers we perform the purchase returns the finally the purchase department will pass the grn information with payables department based on that payables department will create purchase invoice and they process the payments the payment information they will pass to cash department or you can say cash management to perform the bank statement reconciliation if the purchase invoice is belongs to asset related purchase payables department will share that information with asset department based on that they'll create the fixed assets and they calculate the depreciation finally all the data will share with the common department or you can say directly general ledger application all the data from all the departments will share the data with general ledger application then we can prepare the financial reports this is how you have to explain the p2p cycle from this content this is how you have to explain you have to get ready i suggest if possible you give presentations to somebody at your home or office okay you have to speak out it is not like understanding this is functional course when you say functional course it would be more understanding theoretically and do presenting so you have to get ready with this p2p cycle presentation tomorrow if somebody is going to ask you you should be able to explain you may understand but if you don't remember the complete content when you are presenting you will struggle and if you don't speak multiple times about the same you cannot get the confidence to speak about the same content with a good flow of explanation so for that reason you need some experience how you can get the experience by reading this content and remember by remembering this content and by giving the presentations on this okay not only this everything throughout our our course what we are going to discuss what we are going to do in the system you have to plan accordingly okay read the content remember the, you read the content till you can remember okay when you explain you should not struggle or you should not struck with some information and you should have a great confidence when you are presenting how do you get great confidence if you read the content and if you remember multiple times yes you will have a great confidence when you are explaining and when you are explaining also you should have a good confidence and good flow of explanation okay you may explain everything but if you are stuck in in between if you are just just uh, you are disconnecting that presentation you are not able to fetch something what you have to present again that will give negative impression so the entire course what we are going to discuss plan according read the content uh, till you remember and give the presentations that's how you can get good command on this product yeah so that any questions on this p2p cycle please oh uh, lakshman yeah can you yeah okay. you said that uh, per place purchase order approval and the purchase requisition approval the same person the approval was all there or it could be anyone see i may be the buyer in the organization i may have approval limit may be up to 100 dollars more than 100 dollars okay may there there could be some other team of the people or else you know our organization your approval process may be like this anybody let create the purchase orders or purchase requisition that should be approved by the supervisor it depends we cannot say just this is how it would be it depending on the organization 
So for you. banking sector, this process also. Any process, any organization, if they are procuring something, okay, it may be taking some services or it may they might be spending some expense. Same applicable. If it is a banking, there won't be nothing to place in the inventory, right? Yeah, you're right. So they may put, they may render the services, they may spend some expense, or they may buy some assets for their organization. That's all. There won't be any items right. in case of service industries. Non-profit organization. Sorry. Non-profit organization. See, non-profit organizations also. <laughs> If they are taking the services, they have to Service pay, right? So they the need bank, money, they have to maintain their bank. Same in cost, bank, there is no difference. Okay. In banking sector. Yeah. Banking. Anything you take. See, if item is there, you need warehouse. Okay. If you are not dealing with items, no warehouse, no inventory. If you are dealing with items, it may be profit, uh, non-profit organization, some other organization. You can classify with anything. It can be public or private, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You classify with any name. Doesn't matter. What they are doing, accordingly, we are discussing. Now, this you can apply for government organizations or private organizations or anything else. So, yes. when we are doing something, which departments are involved? and how the communication should take place, what is the responsibility of each and every department we are discussing. Yep. If they have item, yes, the inventory department is required. Okay. So if they don't have item, no inventory department. Okay. That's all, yeah. So, hi, Lakshman Manchu here. I have one query. Please. So, Lakshman, suppose our inventory department received 10 items and out of those 10 items, there is one bad item of, uh, means there is some discrepancy. Mm. Okay, and there is only nine right items. So, they have to put some returns for one item. Mm. But our AP team will get invoice of 10 items. Mm. Okay, so how they are going to cater this? Because we have received only nine yeah, right yeah, items. Yeah. What happens is... Your purchase invoice you create with under. This is all we are going to see in our classes, but since we have yeah, question, right. now let's talk. No issues. The purchase invoice, yes, we create with hundred dollars on hundred items only. Okay. Yeah, whatever we will get from the 10 items. Okay. Okay, fine. Let's take hundred hundred items. We receive purchase invoice. So later you are going to return maybe one quantity. Now, when you perform the purchase returns, okay. When you perform the purchase returns, automatically that information will be updated in the payables department. Okay. Payables department, when you are pay, making the payment, that one item price will be reduced from this purchase invoice. That you can do through manual process or you can automate it. Two options are available. Okay, so our purchase returns will be connected to invoice tables tables yeah that means invoice yes whenever you do the purchase returns within the variety fusion inventory that information will flow to tables department variety fusion accounts table automatically it will happen okay yeah. so generally in art world what happens like we have to create debit or credit not in such scenarios same here also since we are not reached that stage, I am not using that terminology, right? Okay. So there are many other guys like who are very new. I should not trouble them. <laughs> same okay. process. Okay. What you do in EBS, we do the same in the future. I ask only that just to... Credit memo, not debit memo, right? Debit memo. Yeah, yeah debit memo, right? Yeah. But in you case can auto create or you can memo. enter through manual process also. Same in the future. No difference. Yeah, yeah. either can supplier can send us the credit memo who is sending memo. secondary point okay who is okay. sending see. see when we are returning how supplier will send you are taking initiative right you are right we create we create and we will inform okay that's it right done so that's all about p2p cycle my request is everything what we are discussing please make a note not only just what I am writing in this spreadsheet. Anyway, I'll be writing this. This also you can make a note. 
and what we are discussing theoretically to understand each and every point please make a note okay please make a point of each and every point that if that is very important you have to read and remember so that will help you a lot and the sheets also i'll share whatever i'm just preparing in the classes okay the points whatever i'm writing uh, from each and every session the sheets also i'll share with everyone okay this you will get so you can use for reference but from your side please prepare the note that this is all about p2p cycle now quickly question. any question yeah lakshman quick question please, um, please. So is, is is the process or any additional nuances, whether it's a direct procurement or an indirect procurement, or is everything the same? Or am I going too deep now? This is a standard procurement process. This is a standard procurement process. See, when you talk about, when it, when it comes to the department, they can do different, different activities also. Say, for example, there will be concept of direct receiving, okay? Mm -hmm. When you say direct receiving, directly you receive the material from the supplier. No requisitions, no purchase orders, nothing. Okay, In, on spot you need material. You will call to supplier, supplier will uh, supply maybe within 10 minutes or half an hour. Mm -hmm. Then you will create the seat only. Later you will just make a plan whether you have to create purchase order and do that you have to link with the receipt, etc. etc. That's a different scenarios that you don't need okay. to understand. When we are working okay. on the specific application, we'll discuss detail level. Okay. Okay, as a finance consultant, we are going to learn financial applications, right? So mm -hmm. to gain enough knowledge as a financial function consultant, what we have to understand definitely I'll cover from. The detail level from our finance applications. These are SEM applications. What level of knowledge we require that we will understand. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll cover whatever we should understand. Just definitely I'll cover. For your question, the answer is so this is standard process. Okay. There could be different uh, business scenarios. Accordingly, okay. there will be transactions. But we are going to cover all the business scenarios with respect to our finance applications, not respect to SEM applications. SEM is not our part. But now you, if I take you through in the class, let's see how to create the purchase invoice and payment, what we can understand, what happened in the background, you cannot understand. That is the reason I'm explaining the complete cycle. Got it. Yep. But I'll take you through how to create the purchase requisitions, how to approve, how to create the purchase orders, how to approve, how to create the GRN, how to create the purchase invoice based on the purchase order only how to create the purchase invoice based on the purchase order as well as a receipt. Okay. Mm -hmm. How to perform okay. the purchase returns, how that information will be updated in the payables. This is all I will cover. So that that okay. will be good information for us, even we are not belongs to SCM. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's all about P2P. You just spend some time to go through and read and remember all this content. Plan to give some presentation to somebody. Now let's look into sales process. So we get orders from the customers. Which department will receive the orders? Sales department. Okay, sales department is responsible to receive the orders from the customers. Say they received an order from the customer, then they'll create that order as a sales order. They'll create sales order. Okay. Customer will place the order. For customer point of view, that may be purchase order for them since they are planning to purchase from us. We are receiving what purpose? To sell. So we call it as a sales order. Okay, sales order. So we get orders from the customers and we record in our books as a sales orders. That's so. After receiving the order from the customer, what sales department has to do? Here also I'm taking the same example. Okay, we received order from the customer for 100 laptops. Okay, 100 laptops. We received order. That is sales order. As per sales order, so and so customer is requesting for 100 laptops. First, we receive the order. Whether we supply or not, that is secondary point. We receive. After receiving order, the sales department will check with the inventory department whether stock is available or not. 
if stock is not available what they can do they received order for sorry, they received order for 100 laptops they, when they verified with inventory department stock is not available then what could be the next step the inventory department will do what they may do anyone they'll go and purchase yes to fulfill the order exactly okay they'll initiate this p2p cycle okay since 100 laptops are required the inventory department will raise the purchase request they'll get approval that goes to purchase department payables department this and that already we discussed the stock is not available they'll purchase and they'll supply if they have a time so customer is asking material today stock is not available then they may not accept that sales order they may not proceed with that they may ignore okay say stock is available order from customer for 100 laptops okay we are recording the same as a sales order and when they verify with inventory department yes in the inventory department thousand quantity is available thousand laptops are available customer placed order for 100 laptops now what sales department has to do is they have to give the confirmation to the customer first they received customer placed order the second step is they have to confirm they have to book the sales order okay book sales order booking sales order is nothing but giving confirmation to the customer as we are going to supply the material okay so sales department is receiving the orders from the customers that we are recording as a sales orders then they are verifying with inventory department whether stock is available or not if stock is available they have to book the sales order sometimes even stock is not available they can book the sales order how customer placed order for 100 laptops and they are expecting that 100 laptops within 10 days now, in sales department is verified with inventory department. Inventory department is saying stock is not available. Then they can check with inventory department. You have a customer who required 100 laptops in 10 days. Is there any possibility we can buy and supply within the same time? Then they can plan to buy and uh, supply less than 10 days. Like they may plan. So they'll check with the purchase department. Is there any possibility we can purchase the 100 laptops to supply in 10 days, maybe in seven to eight days? They have to plan like that, right? So if there is any possibility to purchase within seven or eight days, they can purchase and they can supply. Meantime, they can give the confirmation to the customer because they are planning to purchase and do supply. So that is another case. So that means if stock is available, they can book the sales order. That means they can give the confirmation. Even stock is not available in the inventory department, still they can give the confirmation. Their plan could be they'll buy and they'll supply. So it could be any scenario. So they give the confirmation to the customer that we record in the sales department as a booking the sales order. We book the sales order. Okay, we give given the confirmation. Stock is available in the warehouse or say inventory department then what is the next step the next step should be performed by inventory department okay the next step should be performed by inventory department here we have to understand how warehouse or how inventory can be managed what would be the structure of inventory this is what we have to understand so before we proceed with that let's try to understand the basic structure of our home so there will be hall, a kitchen, a bedroom, a reading room. This is how different rooms will have. You can have different rooms. If you want to enter into any one of the room, first you have to enter into hall. First you enter into hall. From hall, you can enter into kitchen or bedroom or it can be study room. Okay, you are in the study room. Now you want to go out. Can you go out directly from your study room to out? No. First you have to enter into hall. From hall only you have to go out. The same structure can be 
used for warehouse management also here you can see so however if we have a dif different rooms for different purposes within the warehouse also same concept we can have a different total area you can take as a inventory warehouse so this is a common area you can call as receiving shipping area staging area however you can have a hall in the home in the same way this is a staging area you are purchasing something from supplier when you purchase something from supplier the material will come to this common area okay common area then those items will be placed in the respective sub inventory say you are dealing with the four different items you may have a four partitions within your warehouse okay this may be for mobiles this may be for laptops this may be for bikes this may be for cars so you purchase cars from the supplier then the truck will come it will unload that vehicles here then from there you have to move that item into sub inventory four sub inventory four may be for cars you purchase mobiles from the supplier the mobiles will come the truck will come and it will unload here those you will be placing into sub inventory one sub inventory one for mobiles you purchase laptops first the laptop should come to this common area or you can call a staging area from there you have to place in the right inventory sub inventory so if those are laptops you will place in the sub inventory that means so you are getting that material into the staging area and you are placing in the right sub inventory the same way if you are supplying to the customers also say for example in the sub inventory one you have a mobiles okay now you are supplying that mobiles to your customers first you have to move these mobiles from sub inventory 1 to the shipping area what purpose you are using according you can name it but by default you can call a staging area you'll move those mobiles from here to here here you may do the packing or as you may do the packing in the sub inventory itself finally you move here from here you will ship to the customer location so this is a common area when there is item inflow or outflow first it has to come to this common from there you can place anywhere if if there is any item outflow if you are moving the item from the warehouse inventory from sub inventory so you have to place in this stage in from here you can ship to the customers so this is a basic structure of inventory organization or warehouse management in some warehouses there may not be sub inventory concept okay there may not be sub inventories but most of the cases you can see sub inventories nothing but partition okay so partition if you have a separate sub inventory is easily you can manage the items separately quickly you can access their own very big mess if there is no partition if you are dealing with the different different items those are knowing those can be just messed right so better you can be always we maintain separately and you follow the row rack some different bin system concept etc etc that's completely inventory related concepts warehouse management related concepts forget about those this is a basic structure now we received order from the customer and we given the confirmation now inventory department has to ship this material to customer location so say in the sub inventory one we have laptops now we have to move this laptop from sub inventory to shipping area okay since we are going to ship to the customer you can call a shipping area or simply you can call a staging area we place the items there for temporary purpose item will stay there for a temporary purpose so we move the material from sub inventory to staging area who has to do this activity inventory department who has to do this should be done by inventory department in some organizations there could be separate department called a shipping department also okay or else inventory department only will take care of it or else there could be some shipping separate team who will take care of the movement of these items moving from here to here or here to here they, are, they involve in that so the first step is if you want to ship to the customer the very first step is we have to move the material from sub inventory to staging who will do this the physical activity should be done by inventory department whenever inventory department will move the material from sub inventory to staging the inventory department will, will inform to sales department as we ship material or we move material from sub inventory to staging 
So whenever there is a physical activity of moving the material from sub inventory to staging, the same activity they will record in their books as a quick release. Okay, sales department should track in their books as a quick release is happened. Quick release is nothing but moving material from sub inventory to staging. Sub inventory to staging. Who is doing this activity? Inventory department. The inventory department, why they are doing? Sales department is informed. Okay, we received an order from so and so customer and we given the confirmation also. You please take care of the rest of activities. Okay, they'll just give that information, the sales and sales order information to inventory department. They'll take initiative of shipping. In the shipping process, first step is they move the material from sub inventory to staging. So whenever they do the activity, the inventory department will inform to sales department. Why they are informing to sales department? Sales department is in touch with the customer. Customer can call to the sales department anytime to inquire about the status of their order. So if inventory department is informing to sales department as they, they, they already picked the material, the same the sales department can convey to the customer as Yes, already we picked the material and it is packed and it is ready to ship. So for that reason, there should be communication between the inventory department and the sales department against the sales order, what exactly going on. Okay, so whenever inventory will move the material from sub inventory to staging, the sales department will record in their books as a quick release is done. The next step is they'll move the material from the staging to customer location. So who will do that? The inventory department or say shipping department. Whenever you move the material from our inventory organization to our warehouse to customer warehouse or customer location, okay, the sales department will record the same in their books as a ship confirmation. Ship confirmation. They record in their books as a ship confirmation is done. So if customer is going to call, they can inform. Okay, already we ship the material. So you may receive in one day or two days, that sort of communication they can have if inventory department is going to share the, the shipment related information with the sales department. Say they ship 100 laptops. Okay, say they ship 100 laptops. So customer may return those laptops if any laptop is not in good condition. So that means sales returns. The sales returns also can be handled by sales department. The okay, sales returns. If any returns from the customers, sales department will take care of those as a sales returns. They'll record in their books. And again, that material they'll send to inventory department. And say two laptops are returned, they'll record in their books. Again, in so and so sales order, we, we just supplied 100 laptops. Now, two laptops are returned. They have to reduce two laptops. And the two laptops, what they received, again, they have to send to inventory department. They're involved in the communication. Then, after that, the sales department will pass the ship confirmation details with the receivables department. Okay. So, sales department responsibility is selling the material or items. Then collecting the payment from the customer, that responsibility goes to receivables department. So whenever sales department will pass this ship confirmation details, in ship confirmation, what data they'll share with the receivables department for so and so customer, so and so item, with, a, with this much quantity, with this price we sold, and customer promised, customer will pay within five days or 10 days. So that's how the ship confirmation related information they'll pass to receivables department. Based on that information, the receivables department will create or they'll record sales invoice in their books. Or you can call as bill or billing. They'll bill to the customer or call it as a sales invoice. Both are same. Okay, billing or sales invoice. Let's use this that knowledge. Okay. They'll create the sales invoice. What information you can have in the sales invoice? Who is the customer? What is the customer address? 
and what item we sold to that customer, how much quantity, what is the price, what is the total amount, and what are the payment terms. That means when customer is going to pay, okay, all the details, all the details, to which location we ship the material, to which location we have to send the invoice, all the details we have to record in the sales invoice. Say customer paid, okay, so the payment terms are 10 days. After 10 days, say you receive payment from the customer. When you receive the payment from customer, we have to record the receipt or you can call as cash receipt. Okay, so we record the receipt. Now the receipt information, the say receivables department should share to cash department. Already we discussed the cash department responsibility. What is the responsibility of cash department? They have to maintain the bank accounts. They have to perform the bank statement reconciliations. Okay. So here, the receivables department will share receipt information with the cash department. What cash department will do? They'll get the from banks. From bank, they'll get the receipts. That means as per the bank, they get in the sense the as per bank statement, how many payments they received in this month. As per receivables department. Okay. As per the receivables department, how many receipts? So as per the receivables department, they received, okay, the cash department received one report from the receivables department, which states in this month, we received 20 payments. When they get the bank statement from banker, as per bank statement, the payments what they received, which are reflecting in the bank statement is only 10. As per bank statement, okay, as per bank statement, 10 payments received, as per receivables department record, records, 20 payments received. Okay, they have to find out the reasons, what's wrong, what's going on. They may finalize, yes, receivables department received 20 payments from the customers but only 10 checks deposited in the bank or 10 got cleared. That is reason 10 only reflecting in the bank state. Please go on mute. Please. Please, please. Okay. They should, I mean, please, uh, like, uh, we don't need to remind again and again. By mistake, if you unmute or if you forget to unmute, uh, just mute after unmuting and asking the questions. Okay. So please take care of those. That's very important. And again, when you ask the questions also, please make sure that there is no background noise from your end. Okay, please. Thank you. So that, that could be the case. Okay, they received 20 payments from the customer, but only 10 checks submitted in the bank for clearing. 10 got cleared, the 10 are presented in the bank statement. Or else it could be like this. 10 payments they received, 10 they submitted, then the 10 checks they deposited in the bank, 10 payments, 10 customer payments got cleared, 10 still under clearing process. That could be the reason those are not reflecting in the bank statement. Finally, they have to find out the reasons why these two are not matching. Okay, so matching is not mandatory, there should be clarification on that. So this is how the cash department will involve in the bank statement reconciliation related to receipts. The P2P cycle, we have seen the bank statement reconciliation related to payments. This is a payment related reconciliation case of P2P cycle. Here, the bank statement reconciliation is belongs to receipts. This is a receipt reconciliation. Okay. So finally, all these departments will share the data to this common department to prepare the financial reports. Okay. So this is what we have to understand when we talk about sales costs. If any order from the customer, sales department will take the responsibility of recording the same in their books as a sales order. 
and they'll check for the stock availability. If stock is available, even stock is not available, if there is any supply possibilities, purchasing and supplying, they'll book the sales order. Booking sales order is nothing but giving the confirmation to the customer as we are going to supply. The next step is, whenever we move the material from sub inventory to staging, that we record in the sales department as a quick release. Whenever we move the material from our organization to customer organization, we have to record in our books as a ship confirmation. If any returns from the customer, we record as a sales returns. And the ship confirmation details, sales department will pass to receivables department. The receivables department will record the same information in their books as a sales invoice information that you can call as billing also. And whenever we get the payment from the customer, we record the receipt. At the receipt information, the civils department will share with the cash department for bank statement reconciliation. Which bank statement reconciliation? Receipt related bank statement reconciliation purpose. And finally, all these departments can share the data with the common department to prepare the financial reports. Here already we discussed for inventory department purpose. Okay, to maintain the stock, to perform some inventory related activities, we have an application from Oracle that is Oracle Vision Inventory. The short name is IRB. And here, sales department they are involving sales order creation, booking, pick list, ship confirmation, and sales returns. Okay, this. This is the activity they do. This is all about updating the information, okay? Giving confirmation, updating as a pick release has happened, ship confirms happened, and sales returns again activity. These two are activities which are done by sales department. Against this activity, it is all about updates, okay? Booking, picking, shipping as just the update against the sales order. Anyway, these all activities should be taken care by Already discussed the pick release ship confirmation, those are the physical activities which should be done by warehouse team. But sales department will take the responsibility of tracking, okay, tracking that information. Okay, they look after those details, what is going on. To do all these activities, okay, we have an application from Oracle that we call as Oracle Fusion order management. Okay, order management, OM. By using Oracle Fusion order management application, you can create the sales orders and you can book the sales orders. Whenever pick release activity takes place in the warehouse, you can update the same in the order management. Okay, once shipment is done, the same you can update in the order management application as a shipment is done against so and so sales order. Any returns from the customers, we can record as a sales returns by using this application. And what is the responsibility of receivables department? They're recording the sales invoices against the ship confirmation. And whenever they get the payment from customer, they're recording their books as a receipt. To record the sales invoices, and to record, to create the receipts, we have an application from Oracle that is Oracle Fusion Accounts Receivable. Short name is AR. By using Oracle Fusion Accounts Receivable, you can create the sales invoices and then you can create the receipt. And to maintain the bank accounts and to perform the bank statement reconciliations, what application we have from Oracle already we discussed the same name that is Oracle Fusion Cash Management. Short name is also CMR CB. So by using the Oracle Fusion Cash Management application, you can maintain the bank accounts and you can perform the bank statement reconciliation. In this process, which reconciliation, receipt related reconciliation. Finally, from all these departments, you can send the data to common department to prepare the financial reports. To prepare the financial reports, Oracle is providing an application called as Oracle Fusion General Ledger application. GL, okay. 
by using oracle fusion general ledger application you can collect the data from all these applications and you can prepare the reports within the gm general ledger application so this is the sales process so this process we call as o2c cycle o2c cycle o2c o2c stands for o stands for order but q stands for to c stands for cash so o2c stands for order to cash cycle so in this this also we are calling a cycle why whenever you get order from the customer you have to repeat all these activities you got order from our customer today the eight sales order book sales order pick release ship confirmation should be done if any returns from the customer we have to record the sales returns then that information we have to pass to receivables department they have to pay sales invoice when they get the payment they have to pay receipt and that information the receipt information they have to pass to cash management application to do the bank statement reconciliation all the data we have to send to gl tomorrow you got order repeat the same process so whenever you get this whenever you get orders from the customer this is a cycling activity you have to repeat this process that in reason this also we are calling as a cycle order to cash cycle okay the process is getting initiated with order with the customer order okay with the customer order the process is getting initiated and the process is end ending with the cash when you receive the cash that means primarily these three departments are involved this receivables is sharing cash receipts information with the cash management application and all the departments are sharing the data with general ledger application that's all but primarily these three departments are involved with this o2c cycle okay so this is all about o2c cycle okay please make a note of all these points read and remember and you should be able to give the presentations that's important please plan for presentations so you can plan from right from beginning this whatever you discussed in the previous class also you can explain to someone what does it mean by oracle fusion financials application what does it mean by application cloud cloud options what does it mean by instance what are the type of instances we have so this is how you have to explain say if you want to create a user in the fusion applications you have to take so so navigation and these are the minimum two roles we have to assign application implementation consultant right to security manager this is how you should be able to explain then that's how you can get ready with this product by attending by understanding we cannot do anything when you attend it will be like you attending only so you have to spend enough time to practice that will help you lot definitely you can just uh, reach the target what you said through this course okay. so that's all about o2c cycle okay any questions on this please yeah uh, lakshman this is after question question please yeah actually i need to know what is the you know the difference between ebs and this fusion i don't know you have covered in the previous session but what is what the is major that? difference what is the difference between uh, transactional and the process wise not you know the technology wise i know that it's a cloud and uh, you know the graphic user interface is totally different and middleware is different but the transactional and the process wise is yeah. there any difference in fusion and uh, ebs yes 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 okay once we see the fusion applications you can mm. understand at least see you should know at least one then i can explain like how it would be i can compare when we don't know both or when you don't see something even if i explain it is difficult you can just make a note of that question definitely i'll explain yeah okay. but we need some time okay and one more thing is there any part for the procurement and the sourcing is sourcing and procurement will be covered or not in this uh... see, our course is financials mm -hmm. okay we'll focus on financials only and mm -hmm. what are the basics we have to understand from supply chain management application we will go through reality those are not required but if you know the basics that will help you lot our course is finance okay okay but that's what you know i need in you know, the little bit you should you know the yeah yeah that, that see we the, should know because the uh, supply chain applications are directly connected with the finance we should aware of that i'll cover okay so how much it will be covered that's my point how you much will... is required that much 
being a finance consultant if you are going to work for implementation project or upgrade mm -hmm. project or support project or something else okay if you are going to work as a finance consultant what level of knowledge we require from scm that i will cover okay okay that i Thank given you. the course curriculum also detail level i given okay mm -hmm. so course curriculum also i given uh, you may have a look Oh, oh, thank you, See, thank you. I I just made a plan. It's not like you are targeting and you are planning to learn something. Mm -hmm. I know very well why you are attending these classes. After going mm -hmm. through these classes, you have to get the job and you have you should be able to survive. So accordingly, I designed the course. Okay, after completing this course, so you should be able to crack the interview. After getting into the company, you should be able to survive. That these two are very important. You are right, but you know the, for the initial level it's okay. But uh, if you go for the you know, the senior level, so you know that you know the my right? How do you go senior level and all? Just see, uh, frankly speaking, with this content, I could see most of the people with uh, three, four, five years experience. They are claiming and they are able to crack the interview and they are able to survive. Mm -hmm. Senior level. When you say senior level, directly it is not possible, right? So you are already working as a project. I have already leader. you know the fourteen years experience in. No, no, that's what. That's what. I am coming to that point. Yes, fine, I'll take your example. You are working from last 14 years. Now you are mm -hmm. learning fusion. Mm -hmm. Like you, the people, what they are doing is they are showing like a 10 years of experience on EBS and uh, three to four years they are claiming on the fusion. Since they are going through these classes and they already they know about EBS and all, they, they'll be easily managed. After going through these classes, you, you will come to know each and everything about fusion. Directly you can jump into the fusion project. Okay. Okay, and if you are mm -hmm. working as a manager, you can claim. I'm not suggesting generally what people are doing. So I, I handled already two, three cloud projects as a manager. That's how you can claim. You'll be able to prove that with this knowledge. That's what everybody is doing. And most other people are doing. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Right. Now We'll have a look at these two cycles in one go. Before that, just remember the short names for each and every application. Okay, we'll wind up the session in 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. So this weekend, we are running the sessions from 8 to 10. From next weekend onwards, we'll have a classes from 7 to 9, 7 to 10. In between, we can have 10 to 15 minutes break as per our convenience. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it that way. So today and tomorrow, 8 to 10 only. Okay, we'll wind up the session in 10 minutes. Okay, let's have a look at these short names. Inventory, we are calling as IRB. Purchasing, we are calling as PO. Accounts payable, we are calling as AP. Cash management, CM. Fixed assets, FA. Variety fusion, general ledger, GL. And inventory, IRB. Order management, OM. Accounts receivable, AR. General ledger, GL. Cash management, CM. These are the short names we have. Now we'll see these two cycles in one go. I took here only short names. So when I talk about P2P cycle, this is a P2P cycle. Okay. We raise the requisition, we'll get approval that goes to PO, purchasing department. Then requisitions, RFQ, request for quotations, we receive quotations, we analyze the quotations, we choose the best quotation. We place the purchase orders with approvals. We'll record the GRM. We may record the purchase returns. Then finally, based on the GRM information, accounts payable, AP will prepare the purchase invoices and they'll make the payment. The payment information, AP will share with the cash management or bank statement reconciliation. AP will share asset purchase invoice information with the fixed assets. Based on that, they'll create the Fixed assets and their calculate depreciation. Finally, all the data will send to general ledger application for financial reports. When you talk about O2C cycle, we record the sales orders. That's what means sales orders. We'll check with inventory if stock is available. We'll book the sales order. Whenever there is item movement from the sub inventory to staging, we'll record as a quick release. When we move the material from our organization to customer organization, we record the same in our books as ship confirmations happen. Any returns from the customer will record as sales returns. Based on the ship confirmation, the receivables department, AR will create the sales invoices. When they get the payment from customer, they record the receipt. 
And the receipt information we have to share with the cash management for bank statement reconciliation. Finally, all the data will come to GL for financial reports purpose. So these are the three departments which are involved in the two cycles, inventory, CM and GL. These are the three departments which are involved in only P2P cycle. These are the two departments which are involved in only O2C cycle. Now this is our area. We are going to learn this area. We are going to learn financials. So, so GL, AP, AR, CM, FA, these are the our core applications. Along with that, I'll take you through some tax related and expense reporting related applications also, which falls under financials product family, but these you take as a core. So this area is core financials application. These applications falls under supply chain management, SCM, SCM applications. Okay, right. So now take the case, say in accounts payables, we have a 10 transactions, those may be invoice or payments, account receivables, we have 10. Take like in each and every application, we have a 10, 10 records. So how many applications we have? Total seven applications other than GL. From these seven applications, from each application, if you send 10, 10 records to this GL, total here, it would be 70 records, right? Here we have 70. In AP, how many we have? 10. In AR, how many have? 10. Take example 10, 10 records we have in each and every application. All the applications, we send the data to GL, general ledger application. Say in GL, we have a 70. When you compare GL with AP, AP is, AP is subpart with the GL data or more than that. This is sub only. In 10, in 70, 10 belongs to AP. In 70, 10 belongs to AR. In 70, 10 belongs to FA. This is how. Other than GL, we have 70. In other applications, we have 10, 10 records only, subparts. When you compare any application to GL, those are subparts. So that is the reason. So this other than GL, all applications we call as sub-ledger applications. The main ledger is general ledger. The main total data we maintain within the GL. Other than GL, all other applications we call as sub-ledger applications. Okay, the application you can call as module also. Module is the technical term. Module is the technical term. So this is what you have to understand. Please go through, read and remember, and you should be able to give the presentation with a great confidence and good flow of explanation. That's very, very important. You get ready with that content till today's session. Okay, so in tomorrow's session, I'll take you through the instance. Okay, we'll work on instance. We got some basic understanding about this P2P and O2C cycles. Okay, go through and read and remember. That's very, very important. Understanding is not enough. We have <clears throat> read and remember and you should be able to present. So based on this understanding, what you can initiate within instance, I'll take you through in the instance and tomorrow we'll work on the instance. So if you have any questions, you can stay back or else we're done for today. We'll connect tomorrow, same time. Okay, shop 8 a.m. IST. We'll connect tomorrow, 8 a.m. IST. We'll work on instance. So any questions from anyone, please. And hope you already, you tried with that instance, creating user at all. If not, yet, you done, just try to create one or two users so that you will get introduced to the instance, how to navigate, how to create user. That's how you can get ready by today. At tomorrow's session, I'll be covering uh, for two hours on the instance only, so that the same you can practice tomorrow itself. Because these are weekends, you, you get time and you can utilize those. So just plan accordingly. So we're done for today. If you have any questions, you can stay back. We can discuss. If you don't have any questions, you may draw from the meeting. Thank you all. See you tomorrow, same time. Any questions from anyone, please? Right. Seems to no questions. Oh, I have one question. Please, After please. completion of this course, do you guys also help in clearing the certification? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. We'll do that. One second. Uh, we'll that we'll discuss offline. Let me okay. stop this. One second.